This episode is brought to you by Curiosity Stream. Without a doubt, Billie Eilish is this year's breakthrough artist. Her album tackled themes of suicide, sobriety, and even climate change, referencing the California wildfires. Hills burn in California, my turn to ignore ya. A direct result of rising global temperatures. Find out more about the new technologies being used to combat wildfires, witness the current repercussions of climate change, and how we'll all live on Mars after we mess it all up. I'm kidding. Hopefully. Mars would be cool, though. It's all on Curiosity Stream's breakthrough, but more about that later in the video. Billy. Billie Eilish is the most talked about teen on the planet. So let's talk. She amassed over a billion streams before even releasing her debut album. In part, due to the overnight sensation that was Ocean Eyes. She was only 13 when it was recorded, but otherwise it's a pretty straightforward pop tune that displayed her sultry vocal talents and her brother Phineas's production prowess. The brother-sister duo shared the track on SoundCloud, and it took off shortly after. The platform is usually known for giving rise to do-it-yourself hip-hop artists. It's not common for a pop act to find overnight success on SoundCloud. But then again, Billie isn't your common pop star. I mean, she's painted as a pop star to the general public, but what is pop nowadays? Her music is part electronic, part rock, part hip-hop, bound together by a delicate voice and a neo-punk aesthetic. Interscope Records were quick to take notice of her talent, helping her deliver the EP, Don't Smile At Me. The dark pop single Bellyache carried folk-like verses strung between electronic dance music choruses. The siblings began to defy genre, but more notably presented some unusual songwriting. A fictional story about murder from the perspective of a psychopath. My friends aren't far in the back of my car. It's more fun than dark, but it was the single copycat that would give us a glimpse at their forthcoming horror-inspired direction. Their music stands out in the pop universe where everything is made in a professional studio. Even with a major label, the pair continues to write and record in Phineas's bedroom studio. They found working alone together to be more raw and from the heart. It's a level of creative freedom that few pop stars have been afforded, at least this early on in their careers. Their label has avoided intervening with their creative vision. They aren't trying to mold her image or sound to fit the pop mainstream. It might be why none of her following singles sounded similar to one another. You Should See Me in a Crown carried the horror theme forward with some heavy trap influence. You should see me in a crown. I'm gonna run this nothing to it was quickly contrasted by When the Party's Over. Proof of her choral upbringing, it's a hauntingly personal ballad with some Bon Iver 22 a million type stylings. Bury a friend delivered a pulsating black skinhead sort of omen. The accompanying music videos were made to grab your attention, but it was her range of singles that helped cast a wide net, putting her on multiple genre-based playlists and stations. It's why it seems like she's everywhere at once. Her EP was strong, but it was her debut that proved the buzz to be worthy. When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go is consistent, cohesive, and self-aware. A whole piece of art with songs that service one another. One of the best-selling records of 2019, it debuted at number one on the Billboard 200, making her the first artist born in the 21st century to do so. Yeah, she was born after 9-11. Feel old yet? It became the best-performing album of 2019 in the US, with 12 of the album's 14 tracks charting on the Billboard Hot 100, the most ever for a female musician. She's garnered six Grammy nominations, including Best New Artist, Record of the Year, Album of the Year, and Song of the Year, making her the youngest artist to ever be nominated for all four major categories. And in the following months, she will be the youngest artist ever to record a Bond theme. To understand what's so special about Billie and her music, let's analyze her biggest hit today. I'm the bad guy. Duh. Bad Guy subverts genre, musical form, narrative perspective, and even gender roles. 
it hardly sounds like your typical radio hit. Most of her songs on the record are pretty basic at their core. Bad Guy is no different. It's made up of a pretty simple bass and drum track. Since Billy's vocals sit somewhere between a whisper and a hum, Phineas produces in a way that emphasizes his sister's voice, usually using a ton of low-end bass frequencies, kick drums, snaps, or the absence of sound itself. It sounds like Billy singing along to music playing at a party next door. Apart from the occasional sound effect, it's an artfully crafted illusion of intimacy. Phineas layers and pans multiple takes of Billy's voice, bringing them up close and personal to each ear. Think you're so criminal. It adds to that feeling like she's getting inside of your head. Billy's breath adds a percussion-like effect here too. Bruises on both my knees for you, don't say. Those loud intakes of breath are pretty reminiscent of a cymbal. When, when I'm wanting to my soul, so cynical. She's a pop miniaturist, avoiding any grand vocal gestures, but still bringing hard-hitting tracks. But the production is also unique because they don't shy away from strangeness. Like the hook. It doesn't exist. At what should be peak high point of any pop song chorus, the whole arrangement stops completely, delivering the song's title I'm the bad guy. before a cartoony synth takes over to keep things interesting. Duh. It shouldn't work. But it's just quirky enough. The song ends with the trap outro, dramatically falling from 135 beats per minute to 60. That's almost unheard of in pop singles. It's jarring for listeners, disruptive for dancers, and can pull attention away from the song's narrative. It's difficult to ignore the sudden change, making it a hit that could only exist in the streaming era. We're in an age where every rule is being broken. In the outro, Billy builds to a nursery rhyme horror movie melody. I don't see what she sees, but maybe it's cause I'm wearing your cologne. There's plenty of imagery like that in her lyrics. Bad Guy sees Billy taunting a lover, flaunting her tough nature while questioning his own. It's an interesting role reversal that puts Billy in the driver's seat. It's been a minute since a girl has been the bad guy. It's a bit ironic considering Billy is the female perspective of the current male-dominated wave of emo rap or sad pop. That whole new emo style has had plenty of male counterparts. In fact, it's pretty much entirely male. It's a bit of a new avenue and she's the first girl in it. It seems pretty obvious why music media would make a big deal out of that. Being a girl with that aesthetic brings a new and exciting angle to that aesthetic. Pop has become less about materialist concerns and more about existential ones. Today's teens are lost, afraid, uncertain, and they think about death. Bubblegum pop is not going to cut it. Billy's response to the world collapsing around her is to make it into art. Billy's music is like a reassuring hug. To teens, she's saying, I know how you're feeling, and you're not alone. She champions the strange, the misfits, and the misunderstood. She comes across as a candid and honest teenager, not a brand produced by some marketing team. She's real, and her fans adore her for it. You might not get her, but she embraces it. And quite frankly, she probably couldn't give a damn. Billie Eilish is here to stay, breaking the rules like no one else. This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. From the founder of the Discovery Channel, CuriosityStream has thousands of documentaries from some of the world's best filmmakers. Earlier I mentioned their breakthrough series, and episodes like Extreme Wildfire Combat, Greenland is Melting, and A Life on Mars. It's by far my favorite series on the platform, featuring experts showcasing recent developments in the sciences, like resurrecting extinct animals, gene manipulation, and our attempt in journeying to the sun. You can get unlimited access starting at just $2.99 a month, but my listeners get the first 31 days completely free when you sign up using the link in the description and the promo code MIDDLE8. You'll also get access to Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like Polyphonic, Volksgeist, and myself. The world's top documentaries and more from the creators you love await at curiositystream.com slash middle eight. As always, thanks for watching, ladies and gents. Thank you to my patrons who support this channel. I've got a few ideas for new rewards, but tell me, what would you like in return for pledging on Patreon? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, give it a like rating. If you loved it, subscribe, and be sure to hit that bell so you never miss an episode. What do you think of Billy? I'm pretty excited to see what her and her brother do for the upcoming Bond flick. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching, and keep listening.